Well, we're, it doesn't matter if it's a neutral field or not. We lost two of our defensive ends since we played you and cam rising is not the same cam rising. So, right. It, Tavi, it does, I, I don't, yeah. yeah, neutral field or not. You guys could beat us at rice Eccles If you played us, we're, we're, we're down that are actually our defensive end that would give, that gave Caleb fits. He's, he went down at, uh, after Washington state. So wow. okay. we don't have the speed guy on the edge to kind of contain him anymore. So, I mean, I would just hope we wouldn't get embarrassed. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> no, Utah's a good team. Think about Utah is they're a good team. They're well coached. Well they're coached. well prepared. They play hard. They, we, they play smart too. Like Utah doesn't make the kind of mistakes that a lot of other teams make. Yeah, I would be. Um, I mean, I would. I would hope it would just be a good game. Um, I don't know. I don't think. To me, Oregon State just or Oregon after the game they played against Utah, I just went. You know, I agreed with Tim that I feel like Washington and U, USC and UCLA just due to their health are probably the three best teams at the moment in the Pac-12, just based on the roster health, if that makes sense. So I, I don't think Utah or Oregon will beat you guys in the championship, if I'm being honest. You guys are just you're, – you're sitting really good at the end of the year, which is what you hope for. So It is. It, I'm telling you, this is a uh, – I, I just – I feel that 2002 game uh, – 2002 season where just – it just steamrolled from game to game to game. And it was it was the craziest season. So, guys, I'll, I'll tell you, I had just moved to Washington, D.C. Um, uh, for that season. And and I my the very first week I was there, uh, I went to this bar where it was like the USC, like, alumni bar. And there were, uh, there were two tables of us. Literally just two tables of USC people at this bar. And... The next game, there were like four tables. And the next game, they were like, and they moved it to a bigger bar. And they moved it to a bigger bar. And they moved it to a bigger bar. And when we finally played Iowa in that Rose Bowl, they had the entire floor of the biggest sports bar in all of Washington, D.C. And there were pom-poms and about 500 people there. And I just, I feel like that's the same excitement that we've got going right now. Uh, JWS Studios, JWS, absolutely. From four and eight to 11 and one. Think about that, guys. From four and eight to eleven and one. Probably yeah, like twelve and one, Tony. I'm hoping, real from your li- from your <laughs> lips to God's ears on that one. Yeah. Yeah. What makes me even more excited is that that all these recruits got to see a, a meaningful game, right? I mean, it's Notre Dame, yes, yeah, UCLA, yeah. I mean, those are meaningful in itself for what it's worth, but meaningful as in a national relevance. These recruits got to come and see a Pat Colley. They got to see a game that actually meant something in the in the nation, you know, nation uh, national relevance. And they got to see a show. I mean, they got to see celebra- ce- uh, celebrities on on the field again. They got to see Caleb. I mean, that all of that encompasses to excitement. I mean, far beyond winning. It's I mean everything. I mean it, that really what I mean what happens on the field puts USC back. But what happens around the stadium, what happens in the stadium, what happens on the national media, that's what puts USC back where it needs to be. And that is in Vegas. The Shillelagh's home, guys. The Victory Bell is home. The Heisman might come home. And even the ACC Championship. 